How's it going? I'm Anna Golden and welcome to my vlog. Right, okay, so second vlog we're trying out the bedroom setup, as you guys I'm sure can tell. Um still not totally sure if this is definitely the one that I'm going to go with. If it is, I need to find a better position and a better way of lighting the room because I I seem to be still struggling with the lighting a little bit. <laughs> give, give me a chance to get used to the setup here. It might be a case of I need to put in, um, not blinds, you know, the neck curtains, neck curtains. That's the word I'm actually looking for is neck curtains. So it might be a case of I have to put in some neck curtains in order to not give me a completely washed out look because I'm a girl who does not wear makeup as I'm sure you guys who tune in reg regularly will probably notice I don't wear makeup that is by choice I have nothing against people who wear makeup whether they're male female or whatever because uh, as I said last time gender is a spectrum and people can express themselves in their gen their chosen gender in however way they want to express themselves um and if wearing makeup is something that they feel they need to do in order to express themselves, good for them. It's not something I need to do in order to express myself. Um, and I know this is a bit of a random <laughs> way of starting this vlog. <laughs> but it does it does have an effect when it comes to, to my, my vlogging. And it is something that I'm noticing quite a bit more in this flat than I was in the previous flat where... It, it was darker flat, so I, you know, it was slightly easier to get the lighting, um, not to make me look completely washed out, um, is that, you know, because I choose not to wear makeup, in fact, I choose not to own makeup, um, so I don't even have anything on hand that I could just, like, slap on to, to solve the problem, I would literally have to buy it, and, no. <laughs> no, because I... You know, it's, it's not part of who I am to, to want to buy it, to wear it, um, full stop. And, you know, maybe that's me just being a little bit stubborn. But, yeah, the, you know, I I went for like a five year period where I was sort of like dragging this like load of makeup around with me. And, you know, for the just in case I, you know, wanted to go out on, you know, uh, to go out for an evening and I wanted to, you know, Put it on but every single time I would go out for an evening because I was so used to not wearing it I didn't think to put I didn't think to put it on um so after about five years of that I was kind of like you know what if I haven't actually worn makeup in like five years probably not going to start wearing it tomorrow <laughs> I should get rid of this stuff now it's just taking up space um and that was a good three four years ago at this point so you can see how long it's been since the last time I actually bothered to wear makeup. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's not really been much of a problem in terms of me filming my vlogs, but because the lighting here is different and I'm sort of trying to get used to it, um, so I'm trying to work out how to get it so I don't look completely washed out. Um, it's, you know, the, the reason why I'm thinking about that for a second, but we will figure it out. I will figure it out somewhere. Right, okay, so I've spent three minutes blabbering about makeup, which has absolutely nothing to do with today's topic. Today's topic is taking us back to Never Eaten and the wonderful boys of Never Eaten. Uh, <laughs> so the, the major thing that I kind of want to, to cover I'm talking about the, the never eaten stuff, um, is that I am actively trying to drum up interest in, um, and certainly Hyena Boy, which is the one book which has been released from the collection so far, um, and, you know, start to drum up interest in the second book, um, which I'm still, still editing, um, but I am now finally ready to reveal the name of it to you guys. Um, the name of the second book is The Colours I See. Um, so for those of you who remember um, me talking about um, this project, The Colours I See, originally we'll know that this is a world which runs co 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 
concurrently, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, this is the one that were, runs concurrently to the plot in Hyena Boy, uh, but it's from the point of view of a different one of the other boys. Um, it actually tells a much larger story um, than Hyena Boy. And in fact, I have a very strong feeling that Hyena Boy will end up being the shortest book in the collection. But it kind of makes sense um, thematically um, and in terms of the way that the book itself has been written, that it is the shortest. Um, whereas the others are all going to be a lot longer. Um, and the, the second book, the, the one which is the companion to, to High in a Boy, uh, The Colours I See, will have Zell as the main character in it. Um, so I'm, I'm finally revealing like lots of good juicy stuff to you guys. Um, so I'm not completely sure exactly when it's going to be released yet, definitely by the end of the year. Um, I'd like it to be ready for the summer, but it's a lot, it's a lot bigger of a book. So it's taking a lot longer to to edit it um, because I'm also writing the third book in the in the collection at the same time and some of the things that go on in the third book need to be corroborated or hinted at in the second book because even though they're all standalone books they all should be um, canon to each other and they shouldn't contradict each other or if there are some contradictions there, they should be explainable contradictions, they shouldn't be like major game-breaking contradictions, they, they should be sort of like, oh, this is how we understood it then, and oh, actually, no, this is how it really was, um, kind of things. So, yeah, so the second book, The Colours I See, <laughs> um, I learned so much about the characters from, from writing that book, um, that was actually really good. Um, I, you know, editing through it, there are so many moments that just, that just get to me and make me smile and I, I like the same points every single time I'm going through it, I'm like, yes, <laughs> oh yeah, that's totally, out. oh my god, you guys are so sweet and stuff like that, so it makes me react every single time, which, you know, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Um, I'm not going to give you guys too many details about the sort of, the plot of the colours I see just yet, I think it's a little early for that, I will start doing things like that closer to the time, um, to the time that it's released. Um, but like the key thing to sort of know about it is, whereas in Hyena Boy, the magical realism was sort of in the background, um, in the colours I see, the magical realism is sort of in the, the foreground, so um, the colours I see is much more of a fantasy book than Hyena Boy was, but it's still very, very grounded in reality. <laughs> and I'm doing the inverted commas because it's, um, you know, creative license uh, reality, but I'm still trying as much as possible to set it in the time period that it is in and trying not to have anything that's going on that would be completely impossible for the time period that it is set in even if I'm taking a little bit of creative license with certain things, and I'm not going to go too much into the, what those certain things are, because, you know, I don't want to get too much into the plot of it just yet with you guys. But yeah, for as much as possible, and, and that's, that's the thing that I'm really, really trying really hard with all the books from another Ace in the collection, is to set it in the time period that I've chosen for it. So. If there's something that would be absolutely impossible in the 70s or the 80s, uh, which is where the majority of these stories are taking place and it doesn't happen. Uh, so there are no cell phones, <laughs> which is really refreshing. Um, and it is surprisingly refreshing to be like writing a story where you, you know, there's a reason why these characters can't just communicate with each with, it, with each other, why they can't just, you know, pick up the phone, um, like, get, get, get their phone out of the pocket and just, like, phone these characters, why, you know, certain things might happen because you can't get hold of somebody because the technology wasn't there for you to just, in, you know, you're not constantly in communication with everybody, which, you know, is something that our modern world is, is very, very much connected, very, very connected. Um, so, having this sort of like, well, no, these characters wouldn't just be able to phone each other and there would be a limit on, you know, how long they can do certain things. Likewise, there's no internet. 
<laughs> so the characters can't just go online to find something else. Um, information just is not at their fingertips. So a lot of the things they assume or a lot of the things, you know, they they do find out that it might not be like 100% true. They have to work on a lot of, this is what I, how I think it works or this is our understanding of how it works. And, you know, for a lot of things, actually our understanding as a whole, as like a, as a society or whatever else has improved since the point in time that the that it would have been relevant for them so yeah a lot of research into what would and would not be around um, at that point in time um and you know some of it also needs to sort of have a little bit of a, of a local flavor to it because these number 18 books are sort of set in in devon and i, I kind of i have to keep like looking up like how long it would take to get from here to here and stuff like that and like the whole um, working out time differences and stuff. Oh, when I say time differences, um, no, no, that's that's a spoiler. <laughs> but um, I, I have been spending a lot of time using a how long between two certain dates um, yeah, calculator, um, which, yeah is very very relevant to the, the second book and i've been using it a few times in, for various detailed bits um for the third one as well um but yeah there's there's something about writing these books and setting it in this time period and trying to be as real to the time period as possible whilst still having like these fantasy elements coming in and still taking certain creative liberties in order to tell the story that I want to tell. Yes, I know, full well, no, 100%, there are going to be people out there who are going to sort of like argue that's not what it would have really been like back then, but it's a story. <laughs> it, it's a story. At some point, you have to take some creative liberties in order to get the story that you want to be told, told. So I do, you know, I do completely understand that you, there has to be a certain level of suspension of disbelief, um, especially because it is, it does have these fa these fantasy elements in it. It is, um, I mean, I'm I'm classing this these series as a whole as being magical realism um, opposed to fantasy, um, because it I'm not setting it in like a strict fantasy world and. Yes, there, you know, these, these fantasy elements are a little bit um, more and more prevalent as the series sort of, I, I call it a series, as the collection expands. Um, but at the end of the day, these are not characters living in a fantasy world and I'm trying to ground it in as much reality as possible. Um, so I, I feel like magical realism is the better name for it than strictly calling it fantasy but some people might argue that no they are actually fantasy stories um fantasy stories set in a time period and yeah yeah um so <laughs> this is kind of like rambled a little bit um in the, i love these stories i love these characters and you know, getting to spend a lot of time in their world and expanding their world and understanding their world and, you know, there there is something about it that is just very exciting and very happening for me right now. Um, so trying to get these stories noticed and trying to get people interested in them and um, trying to, as, as much as possible, start generating sales um, so that, you know, I can continue getting new stories out there and, and, you know, fingers crossed, eventually becoming, uh, or eventually earning enough money for my writing to do writing full time, which, you know, would be amazing. Um, genuinely would be amazing. It would be like, you know, life goals achieved, full stop. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, there are, as, as I said, I know, I know I keep going on about the Never Eaten books, I know it keeps cropping up quite a lot, but I have to get serious about getting my writing out there, and that means I need to start 
generating interest in the writing that I do have out there and the writing that I am planning to have out there soon and I feel with the Never Aiton books there is something about them that is going to appeal to a lot more people than some of my more complex um, fantasy narratives and I'm not saying that I'm you know being selective about the horse that I'm backing I genuinely love this horse <laughs> I genuinely love Never Aiton and its characters and I'm excited to be telling their stories, I'm excited to be writing their stories, I'm excited to be editing their stories, I'm excited to be bringing their stories to the world and I have a name for all four books at this point even though I haven't started writing the fourth one yet um, and I've now revealed to you guys the name of the second one and who's going to be starring in the second one and this is the one that is the companion to Hyena Boy, so it's the colours I see and it's Zell. Um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, will be released by the end of the summer. But you know, that, that all depends on, on how quickly I can get the second book edited and ready and, and, and stuff like that. And it's a much longer book and it's, it's taking its time. <laughs> it's taking a little time to get through it all. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm hoping over the next few weeks and months to very slowly get you guys hyped and excited about it, um, which means that over the next few weeks or months, or however long it takes, um, I will start giving you guys some clues as to what the story is about um, and, and various things like that. Um, but for now, just knowing that it is set at the same time as Hyena Boy, but it's a, it's a bigger, much more expansive story than Hyena Boy, and it's much more leaning on the fantasy elements than Hyena Boy did, hoping I think that's enough to, to pique some of you guys' interests. Um, I'm also hoping that the title itself, The Colours I See, might give some people a little bit of a hint as to the fantasy element that's going on in the book because it is a little bit of a clue. Um, but if you if you sort of want to theorise, maybe, then I totally suggest picking yourself up a copy of Hyena Boy. You know, there is... It's like my nine p on Amazon Kindle. My <laughs> nine p for for a book on, on Amazon. Well, I know it's the Kindle version, and I know not everybody out there has a Kindle, but still, it's you know. Or if you want to sort of have the paperback book, but you don't want to pay the full price, go to Lulu.com because it's only like six quid there. And yeah, I know with Lulu you've got the postage and packaging, so it might end up being a little bit more. But it's still going to be, you know, cheaper. And if you don't want to pay the postage or packaging, then go for it at full price, which I think is only like eight quid. I think that one is like seven pounds something. Um, so it's like it's not an expensive book, guys. And you might have fun theorizing. <laughs> it might be fun for you guys to theorize, um, especially with the, the second book coming out. Fish by the end of the summer, <laughs> I hope <laughs> by the end of the year, definitely. Um, so yeah, with that said, and hopefully with you guys a little bit hyped and pumped, um, maybe. Um, I I think that's all I can say on this one, and I can just talk for hours about never eating. I really can. Even without saying that much, I can talk for hours about it never eating. <laughs> Don't know how I managed that. Okay. Now I did look at it, but I can't actually remember what the name of the title for the next vlog is. So there will be an edit. Apparently the title of the next one is Spring is Best Season and I completely agree with that title and I'm totally sticking with that idea for the next time. <laughs> No, seriously, I, yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure what I want to talk about for it yet, but Spring is Best Season seems like a awesome, awesome title, especially since we are the last month of spring. It will be summer soon, and summer is not best season. Spring is best season. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I hope you guys 
weren't too bored by all my never ate and rambling again this time um i hope you guys are looking forward to the next one and i will see you next time see ya <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video feel free to check out some of my others and if you like what you see please like and subscribe see ya